We are doing chapter 10, section 1. This is the Taylor series chapter, along with the McLaren series. So we already watched the demo of how we approximated a sine function using polynomials. So what the amazing thing was that we were actually able to take a polynomial and start to shape it to look like a sine function. Now these polynomials, they're called power series. And this is the general form of a power series, you will notice. You can have a constant times x minus a center point to the k power. So you start with a constant, then a new constant with x minus a. Another constant, x minus a squared. Another constant, x minus a cubed, and so on and so forth. The center's at A. Basically, that's like the point of tangency when we did our linear approximation. And um, we're going to look at a particular power series that's going to have different names. So power series is a general term for this kind of a series. But we will look at Taylor series and McLaren series. And so that's what this chapter is all about. So what is a Taylor polynomial? So you have to have a, start with a function, and the function, f, must have derivatives all the way up to the nth derivative. They must exist at a, and again, a is a center, or again, the analogy, the point of tangency that we used for linear approximation. Well, for our Taylor polynomial approximation, it'll still have a point of tangency or center point we call a. Now, important notes, the nth order. That means not we have n terms, but the nth order is the degree of the polynomial. So if we do an order 5, we're going to have up to a fifth power. It is not the number of terms, so be careful. So let's look at this form. And this is something... You have to have memorized, you have to know. So remember, A is the center. So you take your function that you're trying to get a Taylor polynomial of, and you plug in A. That's your first term. Then you take the derivative, plug in A. That's your coefficient of your second term. But then you also have X minus A. Then you do the same thing with the second derivative, find the value of the second derivative, A. Now it's going to be a squared instead and a 2 factorial. With the third derivative, you're going to have a cube and a 3 factorial. And you're going to go all the way. If it's an nth order, you're going to go the nth derivative, nth power, and n factorial on the bottom. Now this also can be written in summation notation. This is the summation notation of that. And for those of you who don't like summation notation, you better start to like it. Um, it's super important. And if you don't get it, it's going to be a problem because we work a lot with summation notation. So let me show you how this works. If we plug in 0 here, 0 power, this will just be 1. And 0 factorial, that's going to be 1. And the 0 derivative, that's no derivative at all. So that's the original function at a, original function at a. Now we index this up, and now it's 1. On the bottom, we get a 1. On the bottom, we get a 1. Or top, we get a 1 there. So there's our x minus a, 1. x minus a, there's no number there, so it's 1. And then you put a 1 there. That's the first derivative. There is that. Then you go k is 2. 2 factorial matches that. You put a 2 here, second power. And you put a 2 here, that's the second derivative at a. So that matches that. And you just keep on going and you'll stop when you get to n. That means you stop at the nth power. Now, this one is just another way of writing it. The only difference is the CK in front makes it match the power series form. 
let's look up here. The power series had a CK. So that's a form of a general power series. But in this case, CK is defined as the kth derivative over k factorial. Well, that's just that. So we can write that separately outside and say the number in front CK. So make sure you understand the summation notation and how that works. We're going to do three examples. And you might want to pause and try these examples before I do them. So we want to use the fourth order Taylor polynomial centered at zero to approximate cosine of one. So we need to find the fourth order Taylor polynomial for cosine. So our function is cosine. So we need to create this polynomial using cosine with the center at zero. So that means a is zero. So go ahead and pause and try this and come back and I will do it for you. So here we go, the derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine. The derivative of that will be opposite of cosine. The derivative of that would be sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So the next, we need the derivative at a, the second derivative at a, the third derivative at a, the fourth derivative at a, and so on and so forth. So we're going to plug these values in. Well, the cosine of 0 is 1. The sine of 0 is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, so we have negative 1. The sine of 0, again, we have 0. And cosine of 0 is going to be 1. So now we have found the derivatives that we need. Now we're just going to create our Taylor polynomial. So the fourth order Taylor polynomial centered at 0. Well, let's look at this. First we start with f of a. It's 1. Then we add f prime of a times x minus a. Well, f prime of a was 0. So it's going to be 0, x minus 0 to the first, plus, then we do the second derivative times x minus a squared over 2 factorial. Well, the second derivative we found is negative 1, so it's going to be minus 1 times x minus 0 squared over 2 factorial. We have two more to go, plus, and I'm running out of room, let me scooch this over a bit, make this happen. Now we're on our third derivative term. So we need the third derivative times x minus a cubed. Well, the third derivative is 0. So it's going to be 0 x minus 0 cubed over 3 factorial plus, And the last term is the fourth derivative, which is 1. So it's going to, the last term is going to have a 1 x minus a to the fourth over four factorial, I'm getting squished here. The nice thing, zero, zero. So now we have the fourth order Taylor polynomial is going to be one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial. I don't need these parentheses here, I'll get rid of that. Yeah, so that is our fourth degree Taylor polynomial. We want to use this to approximate cosine of 1. So p4 at 1 will be 1 minus 1 squared over 2 factorial plus 1 to the 4th over 4 factorial. And I put this in my handy dandy pocket calculator. And I get the answer of 0.542. Now, when I put cosine of 1 in my calculator, I get 0.542. 5, 4, 0. Oh. So you can see it's pretty close. Now we knew we we're going to have an error because we only use four terms. We stopped at the fourth order. If we use more terms, it's going to be even more accurate. So that's the first example. We're going to do another one, example two. This time our function is e to the x, as you can see here. So we're going to approximate e to the first power. So Go ahead and pause, try creating this, and we'll see how you did. 
Welcome back. The derivatives are easy. I am my own grandpa, over and over. And since we're centered at zero, a is zero, all the derivatives are e to the zero, which is just one. And also, I forgot this, f of zero is e to the zero, which is one. So that makes this really easy. So let's create our Taylor polynomial, our third order. We take f of 0 is our first term, so that's 1. Then we take f prime of 0 times x minus 0 over 1 factorial. So we're going to do 1, x minus 0 to the 1 over 1 factorial. And we just keep going. Next term, second derivative is 1. So it's 1, x minus a squared over 2 factorial. And we do the next one, and this is our last one. The third derivative is 1. So it's 1, x minus 0 cubed over 3 factorial. And so, quite simply, this is our third order Taylor polynomial for e to the x. Whoops, that's a squared cubed over 3 factorial. If I use this to approximate e, I'm going to plug in 1, e to the 1. I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 sixth. And if you put that in your calculator, you get 2.667. Now, if you do e to the first in your calculator, you get 2.718. And you can see that it's on the right track. If you were to add more and more terms, you will see our Taylor polynomial gets closer and closer. One more example, and we will be done with this lesson, and you'll be ready for your homework. In this case, we're just going to find a Taylor polynomial for radical x centered at 1. So now what's different, our a is now 1. We've been doing zeros. So now we're going to be centered at a different point, so you got to be careful. So go ahead and try this, and I will do this for you. Welcome back. Let's take some derivatives. This is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. This will be negative 1 fourth x to the negative 3 halves. And then it's going to be 3 eighths, 3 eighths x to the negative 5 halves. So we plug in 1 to each of these. That's going to be 1. That's going to be 1 half, negative 1 fourth and 3 eighths. Those are our derivatives at our center, because remember, we're centered at 1, so now we're plugging in 1 here instead of zeros. The previous ones, we had zeros. So this one, we're plugging in 1, because that's going to be our point of tangency. It's going to be at 1. So let's create this. We're ready to go. So our Taylor polynomial, third degree, you take f of 1, which is 1, plus f prime of 1, which is 1 half, x minus 1 to the first over 1 factorial. And we just keep going. We take the next derivative, which is negative 1 fourth. So it's negative 1 fourth x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial, plus, and the last one, we take our third derivative, which is 3 eighths, times x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial. And let's simplify this. So this 2 is on the bottom, so it comes down here. x minus 1 over 2. Now, let me erase this. You see that we have a negative, so it's going to be minus. The 4 is on the denominator, so it's going to be down here. That's going to be minus x minus 1 squared over 8 plus, and that 8 is in the denominator, so it's going to be down there. That's 6, so we're going to have 48 on the bottom. 3x minus 1 cubed. 8 times 6 is 48. And there is our third order Taylor polynomial centered at 1 for radical x. And that is our last example. Hopefully that wasn't too bad, and we enjoy our homework. Bye-bye.